How to paint a cute koala acrylics on canvas, 11 by 14 inch canvas. Hi there, this is Tracy Kiernan and I'm gonna guide you step by step how I did this painting. I am going to start with a three quarter inch flat wash brush dipped in the water. On my palette, I have deep green permanent and the color titanium white. So I'm gonna load my brush in the water and I'm going to get all the drippings out of the brush. I'm going to kind of squeeze it with my finger to make sure it's not dripping wet. Kind of pat it dry. Make sure that ferrule isn't dripping. And I'm going to load it in the dark green and the white. So about equal amounts. Um, and so what I'm doing here first is painting the entire background. Um, this background is sort of a dark and light green combination of the green and the white. And I do this technique with a lot of my backgrounds. So if you've seen a lot of my painting tutorials, this is very similar to how I set up the background. I like to have that green and white blend together so that we have different variations of green and white. Um, I'm making sure that my strokes are pretty consistent. They're going all the way across the canvas and I'm making sure I have different variations of darks and light because that makes for an interesting background. Um, you can certainly uh, make a solid color background if you don't like the look of the green and the white. You can um, mix the two colors together and just make a solid uh, lightish green color. And um, so this video is speeding up a bit. Press pause when you need to. But this is basically um, the background of the green and the white. Um, do one layer but I'm going back in there and just adding some darker areas and some lighter areas just to make it look interesting and make sure that all my strokes are all smoothed out so you want to make sure that your strokes go across the canvas and you're not having any of that canvas show through and then if you have um, if your paint is not flowing as well you can always dip your brush in a tiny bit of water like I did there, just a teeny tiny bit of water and loading it with the paint helps to get it to flow a little bit better. Uh, now is a perfect time to also paint the sides of your canvas. So I did the sides of the canvas with the same green and white color combo and did that on all four sides of the canvas. And when you are done with this background, um, we're going to be doing a transfer. We're going to be tracing the koala design to the background. Um, and obviously we can't trace it when the paint is wet. So when you're done with the entire background and all four sides, you're going to need to either use a hair dryer to dry it up real quick or set it to the side and come back in about 20 minutes. It should be dry. Okay, so mine is dry. And I'm going to show you quickly how I did this transfer. So um, you have your sheet of graphite paper. You want to make sure that the shiny side down, the shiny side is down on the graphite paper. So it's laying between the, the canvas and the traceable. And so my traceable is optimized for the 11 by 14. Um, this is actually the original one that I drew on paper and taped together, but I have it optimized for you for 11 by 14. So when you print it out, it'll actually be printed on four sheets that you'll have to cut out and tape together. But what you do is simply um, use your pencil to trace over all the lines. You want to press very firmly and you want to make sure that your canvas is flat on the table. So what will happen is your the entire design, including the koala and the leaves and the flowers and the branches, that'll all be transferred to your canvas so that you can easily paint your koala in without um, worrying about the drawing aspect of this painting. This video does not show me tracing all of the koala. It takes quite a bit of time, so take your time to make sure everything is carefully on there. And that is what it should look like when you're finished. Of course, sometimes the graphite paper varies in how dark it gets, and sometimes it's lighter than it normally is. So but the best thing to do is press it as dark as possible. Okay. Um, 
we're going to start with the koala and I have the color light blue violet and titanium white. I'm using a 12 bright brush. I'm going to double load in about equal amounts and actually that's a little too much white so I grabbed some more of that the light blue violet. Um, we're going to paint this and we're going to do the whole colors blending on the canvas thing. Um, for some reason, this technique reminded me of the truck painting. If you did the truck painting um, where we did the colors, but we kind of blended the, the blue and the white to make different areas sort of stand out. This is kind of the same concept um, because this koala is this light blue, light violet blue color, but we have areas like the foot and the back and the arm that we want it to stand out. So we're gonna change sort of the consistency of the blue. So right here where that curve is, I added a little bit more blue to my brush so that it would stand out against the foot. And um, the arm, the same thing, adding just more blue to the brush makes it slightly darker so that it stands out. And then you can blend it back into some of the lighter areas. And you wanna make sure that the direction you're going with the, um, the paintbrush is kind of the direction of the shape. So you can see where the back, when I did the back, my strokes curved with the back, but right here where that leg is, it kind of curves. And I added a little bit of white right there on the edge, just so it would stand out against that arm. And so right here, my strokes are curving around and then it curves, it's almost like a spiral shape and it curves around for that leg. And I'm just blending those colors back in. So you can already see where that darker sort of curve is that um, outlines the, the leg and the arm. Okay, um, I'm gonna do something here. And this wasn't in the tutorial because I, it actually did not work for me, but it might work for you um, if you do this correctly. <laughs> so I decided to outline the eyes, nose, and mouth here so that when we paint over the face, we don't lose where those shapes are. Um, the problem is this is a water-based paint pen so you need to let that dry before attempting to paint over it. And that's what I didn't do because it ended up smearing for me. So it's a good idea, um, but just make sure that it dries before painting over it. So what I'm doing is I'm continuing that light blue, violet, and the white, and I'm gonna paint the entire head, including over the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And um, the reason for the outlining was so that it can still show through, so that I can still see where those eyes, nose, and mouth are. Okay, so um, you want the direction of your strokes to go kind of in a circle sort of motion, air, okay? And then the ears, where our direction of the stroke is going and that the, the shape of the ear. And so the light blue, violet, and the, the white blend them together. Um, I guess this ear is a little bit lighter on the tip. doesn't have to be that way. That's just how I did that. And then the other ear. And then I'm painting over the, um, the entire circle. So over the nose, over the eye, over the mouth. And I'm noticing right now that my black is starting to smear just a little bit. Again, um, let it dry if you outlined it. You can see where it's smeared right there. Um, uh, another idea is if you outlined it with the Sharpie, I don't think it would smear as much with than if you did it with the acrylic paint pen. Okay, so um, I'm gonna let that dry a bit and fix the ear here. So finish the ears, fill in the entire shape. This video is gonna um, 
change here just a second because I stopped and decided to use a hair dryer to dry the face to make sure all that black was dried and then I went back over it so like I said um, good idea just don't do what I did do as I say don't do what I do <laughs> let that black dry before painting over it and actually my um, head ended up having a little bit more white on it that's why it looks lighter in the center so I actually think that looks kind of nice um, just adding a tiny bit more white in the center part of it sort of brightened up the middle part of the face so you can do that as well but that is the uh, the base color of our koala so we can't do any details until all that dries we're gonna move on to the tree branch um, you see me rinsing my 12 bright brush off get all that water off and load your palette in burnt umber and go ahead and paint that um, the shape so um, I'm cutting in on the shape so I'm outlining the shape with the tip of my brush that um, it's always nice to just kind of outline the shape first so you have a nice um, sort of crisp line on the edge of your shape and then you can go back in and fill in the center part of it um, using the full width of the brush for the center but this is another um, your the direction of your strokes are going in the direction of the branch so our branch is diagonal our strokes need to be co going diagonal and if you look kind of at the edge the edge is not like a straight line it's kind of a wobbly line on the edge i believe it looks like that on the traceable so it kind of um, helped you out there but it gets makes it look more like a natural branch if it's kind of wobbly on the edge okay and so i decided to go around this flower to not lose the that where that flower is in the design so i went around the flower and then you want to go around the um the shape of the koala the best you can if you need to grab your round brush to get into some of those tiny areas you can do that as well and then paint the sides if you want your branch to kind of be going off the canvas that's a, a good way to do that so paint the sides brown and then I'm going to do the best I can to go around uh, the koala make sure that your brown doesn't accidentally go over and um, use your round brush um, I'm using my round brush right here to just get around that shape um, Dipping the tip of your round brush in a little bit of water helps with the flow, especially if you need to really get into those small areas. Um, don't worry about painting over the claws. I painted over the claws. So there's that the drawing of the claws and that's super easy to just repaint over. So I just went around the basic shape of that koala and filling it all in just make sure that the direction of your strokes are still going um, as diagonal as possible with the tree okay i'm going to show you how to add some texture in this tree and we're going to be using just our round brush and we're going to make some white in with our brown on our palette so i have about equal amounts of the brown and the white and um not really mixed all the way it's still kind of unmixed i'm going to take my round brush and i'm going to paint um sort of long um, stretched wavy lines to create texture in the tree and since that brown base of the tree is still kind of wet um, that's to our benefit here because it's kind of blending with that brown and then i'm going to have it go off the canvas right here too and so that's um, how we do some basic texture. We don't have to go into far too much detail, but just make sure your strokes are long, sort of um, stretched wavy. You don't want the waves to be like really super um, dense, um, but you want it to kind of go with the flow of the branch. So the branch is going in that angle. Or so our texture lines are kind of going in an angle and I know my hand is covering right there there we go and then if you want you can go back in with more brown so in, instead of that light brown just grabbing more of that darker brown and going back and adding some color variation in your your texture lines and 
And then I'm going to go ahead and paint this branch that's sticking up over here um, with that same brown. Maybe a little bit of the light brown in there too as well. Um, it's kind of a small branch so it doesn't really need much um, texture. But it gets very thin at the tip and kind of goes off the canvas. And then, so we're going to do our leaves next. And the leaves, I did kind of a fun color combo here. I mixed deep green with quinacridone magenta. So it's this dark magenta mixed with dark brown um, to create sort of a different, um, sort of, it's a really dark color it creates, but it, it'll help it stand out against the background. Um, so if we did it just the dark green, it may not stand out as well with the background, uh, but also adding a little bit of red or magenta in the leaf creates sort of a natural looking leaf color. So it's going to be really dark. Um, it, I guess about equal amounts, maybe, yeah, let's try equal amounts. So it creates this really dark green. And so that's what I did for the base color of the leaves. And let's see, we're going to paint the first leaf first. The leaf is already drawn out for you. So just paint it in uh, with the round brush. This is the number four round brush. Have your strokes go in the direction of the leaf. Fill it in nicely. And I'll show you how to get your leaves to be slightly different colors um, to get them to stand out from one another. Because some of the leaves are overlapping each other. Okay, so there's our first leaf. And so our next leaf, maybe I'll load my brush in just the deep green and not the green magenta combo. Or maybe I'll load it with a different variation. Maybe it'll have just a little bit of the green magenta combo and uh, mostly the dark green. But having it be slightly a different color helps it stand out from the fact that it's next, right next to another leaf. Okay, and so I'm going to do this next leaf and let's see, maybe we'll do the magenta green combo and the deep green combo. So that's basically what I'm doing. With each leaf, I'm doing sort of a different variation of color. And then on this leaf, I actually decided to add a teeny tiny bit of white. That's white on my palette. I'm just loading a tiny bit on the tip. And it is creating this leaf um, to be lighter. And you can see how it's standing out from the other leaf. And maybe I'm taking that white and I, I like how that looks with the white. So I'm going back in and sort of adding it on the edge and blending it back. Okay, so I'm um, just going to kind of repeat this process with the other leaves using the green magenta, the dark deep green, and then introducing that white in there. And um, it doesn't really matter which leaves have which combo of colors, just by um, changing the colors for each of the leaves makes it, um, gives it that little bit of a realistic touch with the leaf. All right, I think I'm going to go silent here as I finish up the other leaves. Okay, we have our leaves finished and we're going to move on to those flowers. Get all that green off of my round brush and freshen your palette with some new quinacridone magenta and titanium white. We are actually going to mix both of those colors together to make a medium magenta color. So kind of a light pink, so about equal amounts until you get a shade that's kind of like this. And I'm going to paint the shape of those flowers. So I'm not worrying about any kind of shading or anything like that. I'm just painting that flower shape in, including um, over that circle that's in the middle. So just the entire shape. And we have one that overlaps our um, tree branch right here. So actually, um, this is kind of self-explanatory. Um, I am going to speed up the video just a little bit and go silent. So definitely press pause if you need to.
right here where we have the flower overlapping the other flower to get it to stand out i actually added a little more quinacridone to my brush so that petal stands out against the flower that's behind it so we're going to rinse our brush off next grab that 12 bright we're going to do that line that's in the middle of all the leaves using the 12 bright so i put water on the brush i squeezed it out but i also pinched my bristles together to make sure that edge is right there nice and crisp line loading it with just the quinacridone and painting that middle lean the middle line and then there's a line that connects that leaf to the tree branch so you want to do that line as well um, if this isn't working for you with that flat brush um, you can definitely do this with a round brush or if you have like a really tiny round brush you can do it with that so just the middle line and the little line that connects the branch. All right, we are going to add details in the koala next. Uh, for this next step, I'm using my um, number four round brush. I'm going to mix that same sort of shade of pink that I did with the flowers. And I'm going to paint that middle shape of his ears. So this is just a solid um, color of that shape. So it's kind of a... Um, not a semicircle, but it's just that inner part of his ear. So that one looks more like a semicircle. The other one didn't. And the other one was kind of pointed at the base. But um, filling that in, that shape right there. And we'll go back later and add fur texture to it. But that's just the base color of the inside of the koala's ears. And then we're going to load on our palette Thalo Blue. And that is going to be the color of his nose. So rinse your brush and load it in the phthalo blue. And we're going to paint that oval. And so if you did the black um, outline under and you see it under the paint, that's helpful. I do not see my outline because I painted over it after it's smeared. Um, but it also, if you need to, you can take the traceable and retrace that the face design if you need to. But I just kind of winged it here. So the, the shape of the oval kind of lines up with the ears. If you see the top of it, it kind of lines up with the top part of the middle part of the ears. And then we're going to do some outlining. I am going to take that blue which is the tip of the brush right there and outline that um, sort of spiral shape in his his leg his bottom leg so right here uh, and then I sort of just outline that area right there to get it to stand out okay and I did the top part of his arm and also I did a little bit of the bottom part of his head To do the fur texture, I mixed phthalo with white, so about equal amounts to make a lighter blue. And um, I'm going to do some fur at the top. I'm doing little tiny strokes that sort of go in the direction of the head. So the direction of the strokes over here on the right kind of go to the right. And then in the middle, they kind of go up and down. And then the left, they kind of go to the left. So I'm doing this just on the outer part of that circle. And down here in the lower left, again, sort of on the outer part. In the lower right, just on the outer part, just a few strokes. Um, also note that my brush, um, it's kind of, I'm doing this kind of lightly, sort of dry brush style. So that when I do my stroke, it's kind of light and feathery. It's not dark. There's not a lot of um, paint on my brush. Okay, so I did a little bit more fur sort of in the center part of the circle. And I'm going to do some on the top of his ear, so the upper left um, part of the ear and um, upper part, upper right ear. So the little tiny strokes that curve and go in the direction of the shape. And then a little bit on his arm a little bit on his back so right here on the back i'm having the strokes kind of go outwards in the direction of the curve of his back and again sort of dry brush style there's not a lot of paint on my brush 
and so when you stroke you want to hold it kind of lightly let that paint sort of dry out as you do your stroke um, I can still see that color underneath the color the base color of of the koala and just a little bit um, kind of throughout his body um, don't really want to go overboard with the the fur um, if you're doing this with kids, you can simplify it. You can have them try the fur, but if they're getting too frustrated with it, um, you still have a basic koala shape that looks like a koala even without the fur. And so um, this painting can be successful even if you didn't do the fur. Okay, so I did a little bit on the face and around the ears. But I'm going to stop right there and go on to the eyes. So the eyes are a solid coat of white. Um, freshen up the white on your palette if you need to. Use the round brush, the number four round brush. And we're going to um, paint the eyes. I'm sort of improvising it because my design went away. Um, but just two circles for the eyes. Super simple. Um, the top part of the eye lines up with the top part of the nose. And then you want to wait for that to dry before doing any other details inside the eye. Next, we're going to go in and do some detail inside of the ear, some texture for texture inside the ear. Um, I'm going to use a darker shade of pink than the ears. So on your palette, you want to get a shade of quinacridone magenta with a little bit of white, but it's got to be darker than the base of the ear that you actually did. So, um, you're going to do the lines on the far um, edge of the ear and kind it kind of overlaps a little bit on the outer part of it so these are just little um, dashed lines for texture lines um, and so that's the darker part on the e on the edge part then we're going to go in with white so i didn't even rinse my brush i loaded the tip in white so at the very base of it um, it kind of overlaps the middle part and um, sort of touches that the darker pink. So we have sort of a gradient of dark pink, light pink in the way back of the ear. And on the base part of the ear, it's white. So that's um, how we did, how I did the, the texture of the fur on the inside of his ear. I'm going to add a little bit more white on the base of the ears. Um, they turned out a little uneven, but that's okay. Um, so next we're going to get our brush all rinsed off here uh, and we're going to load our palette in Mars black. So black, we're going to do the, the inside of his eyes and also the mouth and um, get our brush. If the four round brush for you is too thick, you can always get a smaller round brush because this is kind of a detailed step right here. Um, I know my hand is in the way, I do apologize, but I'm just doing a black circle on the inside of his white eye. So circle within a circle. And then we're gonna do the mouth. So just a, a smiley mouth. And so we have a little bit of shading in his nose too. I'm going to add some black to the lower left sort of quadrant of the nose. I'm going to use my finger to just smear it back up into the blue. So smear it diagonally and it gets it so that we have a gradient of the black that sort of smears to the blue. Okay. I'm going to do his claws next. So this is a comma stroke. I'm pressing sort of firm at first and sort of releasing pressure as I go to the tip of the claw. Wish I had a better angle to show you that. Um, but basically you're putting pressure, releasing it, letting it go. So the tip of his claws are nice and pointed. I did three on each. Then I did a highlight on his nose with white. So I got my brush all rinsed off, got all that black off, loaded the tip of it just in white and just did a little tiny line in the upper right. Then I decided to smear that with my finger and that got it to kind of blend and create a, that one turned out kind of cool, the highlight of his nose. And then I did the tip of my brush to add two tiny, tiny little dots for the highlight in his eye. 
Then I took this white even further and added some white fur texture to my already fur texture. And I did mention earlier, simplify if you need to. If you don't feel this white fur texture is necessary, uh, you don't have to do that. Especially if you're working with kids and you want to simplify it, you don't have to do all this additional fur texture. But I basically did it the same way we did with the light blue. So just very light, feathery. This white is super strong. It takes over fast. So you wanna make sure you're holding your brush very, very lightly, not pressing too hard so your stroke doesn't turn into a very big, thick white line that may kind of mess it up. Um, so I'm going back over it just very simply. Then I did another round of fur with black. I did this very subtly, uh, not a lot of black on my brush, very, very tiny lines. Um, hold the brush very lightly, don't press too hard. Did a little bit on that curve right there and a little bit on the under part of his head. And I did some um, little black lines of fur on the um, far left edge of the inside of his ear and same with the right part the far right part of the inside of his ear then I did a little bit on the outer part of his ear and some more detail um, around his head and ear and along his back and a little bit more above his face and around his face and I did a little bit more on his back I um, think I might have went a little bit overboard on the fur. I was having fun. Couldn't stop myself. He kind of looks like a porcupine with all the black spikes along his, his back. Okay, so I think we're done with the fur texture. Um, moving along, we're going to go and um, do our second layer on the flowers. So we have... Uh, in the finished version, the flowers are a lot darker. We're gonna do some shading on the petals next. So we are going to use the quinacridone magenta. I'm gonna paint the far edge of, or the tip of all the flowers. I'm gonna use my finger to actually um, blend it back in with the pink. So uh, you apply the paint to the edge of the petal, take your finger and smear it into the lighter pink so that it, it blends. It's not going to blend with the pink because that pink is dry, but it's going to kind of fade off and go over the pink so it looks like it's blending with the pink. So I'm going to do that to all of my flowers, applying the, ma the magenta to the end, smearing the rest of it back into the pink. And I'm going to do that with all the flowers. And then for that middle part, I got my round brush, I have my white, I'm gonna paint the a little dot in the center, but then take my finger and smear it back out so that white blends back in with the flower. It'll turn into sort of a light pink because that the white's smearing out and we see that pink layer underneath. So blend that out into the petals and then go back and take your white and paint the, a solid circle over it and then paint sort of lines that are on the flower that are stemming out from the circle and sort of like two or three lines on each of the petals. All right, so they kind of look like orchids in a, eucaly a eucalyptus tree. It doesn't make any sense, but it's a whimsical picture, whatever goes in our painting. It looks cool. I decided to do one more branch over here on the left. That's what you see me doing with the brown and kind of balances that branch out a little bit. 
This is the part of the painting where I kind of talked about a little bit more advanced steps. I'm going to show you how to do the detail in his nose, kind of his nostrils right there. I have black and white, sort of a medium gray color on my palette. I know it's kind of hard to see, so a lot of white with a little bit of black right there on the tip. I'm going to paint sort of these angular ovals on the base of his nose. Then go in there and darken it just a little bit at the base so it's not it's not um, too white. So just add a tiny bit of black in there just to darken that bottom part a little bit. And I also decided to go boho with this koala and have some flowers on the head. So these flowers are the same technique as I did with those orchid looking flowers on the bottom. So the base is um, a lighter pink color. If you don't want to do the floral on the head, you do not have to. And I did the tips of it darker and then the middle part lighter. You don't have to do too much details in these flowers. So just keep it simple. And then for the leaf part, I did sort of, um, I did the deep green, mixed a little bit of white, did a stem hanging down, and then I used just the tip of my brush to stamp all these little leaves going downwards at an angle. I did another leaf on the side, so just uh, a simple leaf shape is fine. I did another stem sort of coming out of the flower, and did little, um, magenta and white dots on the the tips of that and I did another flower this one was opposite so instead of the dark to the light in the middle I did a lighter flower um, with a darker color in the middle so I did the base a light color and then I did the middle part of it the darker color and sort of did the the dark magenta in the middle more magenta in the middle, a magenta dot in the middle, and then I took the magenta and I did some sort of line things going on just to blend it back in and a white dot in the middle just to get that to stand out a little bit. And the last thing I did to this painting was some white lines on my leaves. I know there's a lot of details in this painting. I got very detailed oriented this time. Um, so I did a white line on these these um, leaves, but I decided to go back over my eucalyptus leaves um, and do some sort of white texture going on. So I did, I mixed white with the deep green permanent and this is very, very light and feathery. I did angular lines over those dark leaves and it creates a really cool texture to my leaves. Um, very light, sort of dry brush style, not pressing too hard. We don't want it opaque, we want it sort of see-through and it creates that just that nice pretty texture of the eucalyptus leaf. So that is it for this very detailed koala painting that can be simplified, easily simplified. Um, sign your name somewhere in your painting and you are finished. I enjoyed painting this koala. I hope that you enjoyed painting it with me too. Thanks for watching.